Greetings. Going to do a quick walkthrough of the improved structure overview in the Jupyter XXM Zen Core Editor. This uh, was inspired by Gatobus's recent video showing the Phantom Zen Core editing screens and also the new capability we have in Message Designer Pro 2.150, the show hide screens. In doing this work, I also discovered the Phantom Manual has more information on the Zen Core structure, which applies equally to the Jupiters. So if your Jupiter owner is doing some tone design, you need to get the Phantom Parameter Manual. That's easy to find online. Okay, let's just uh, dig right in here. So uh, first of all, this is a unique layout that has both the old structure and the new structure screens in it. So this is not exactly the production layout. This is the old structure uh, overview here. And it did have the basic information, but really didn't help you understand what is happening in the sound chain. So here is what, what you'll find in the new um, layout. So what we have here is each of the four partials um, have, a, have a view that's just like the, you'll, you'll find in that phantom manual, or even the, a, a similar view on the phantom screen here. And it shows the chain going across. You can choose the uh, structure right here and the display dynamically updates to show you what's going on in the ring, uh, XMOD, and that sort of uh, the different uh, structures you can choose. And then going across here, you have your oscillator type. And then each of these blocks in the sound chain here, these, these are hyperlinks that will take you right to um, the appropriate uh, detailed editor for that part of the sound chain. I probably should have made the, th those links a different color, maybe use the purple. Maybe I'll do a quick update. Just make those purple because they do share the green that is the, the color for most of the actual controls throughout the layout. So let's just uh, examine a few tones as, and as an example here. So first of all, we have Lodi right here is Duskscape. And as usual, um, what you do is hit the load button to bring the information in. OK, and Duskscape is sort of uh, this interesting. It's TR01 number 25, which I also think is the uh, pack number one on the new Roland SoundCloud here. So this shows that this is uh, using four oscillators in the sync mode. Um, and then we could, we could go take a look at the particular oscillators. We'll do that later. And it shows the LFO settings here. So in other words, we see LFO1 on all four is driving the filter envelope. And then uh, all four is also driving the pan envelope. So just a, so let's go take a quick look at the oscillator overview just to see what we have here. OK, so this shows that oscillator 1 is PCM, oscillator 2 is PCM, the South Vo uh, Voice Oz, soft pad, and then 3 and 4. So let's just, uh, we can shut those on and off just to see here what we have. So you have just that PCM sound there. That super sound saw there, and so you can dig in and see what the structure is. So let's let's continue on here. Let's get back to where we were. Uh, load the next one, Somerset House. And obviously, again, those presets are just put in here for the for this demonstration. So this is an example here. Once again, they're using all four oscillators, um, and one and two in the cross mod mode. And a little bit of LFO driving on the filter envelope there, a little bit of LFO on filter envelope down here. And then uh, oscillator 3 is virtual analog, oscillator 4 is PCM. And so we can just see this cross mod here as you play with the depth of the cross mod. Once again, it gives you the visual structure to see what's going on. Just continue a quick run through here. X mod min, which is XV5080 number 196. Let's load that. So now we have, this shows we have a ring structure set up in that one. And once again, just using oscillators one and two. And doing, using a lot of, as you can see from the screen, using a lot of LFO action here to drive different things. And he's using only the ring. It's not on the, you can bring in the, the bass oscillators if you want to. And hear what they're contributing. Turn the ring off. Go back the way it was, turn the ring on and. Okay, continuing the quick walk through. Here's Paz Zap, which is also from XV5080. 
And this is a, interesting for a different reason here. Let's play it. And we have a, a routine uh, modulation going on, but you see it's interesting. We have no LFO showing anywhere here at all, but yet we're getting an LFO. And I use this one just sort of remind that there's another place we can find uh, Uh, with the mod matrix, you can send anything to anywhere else. So he's using LFO1 here to drive pitch, cut off, and resonance on that oscillator. And if we, if we turn those off, so there that gets rid of almost all the motion. There's a little bit left from the effect that he's using a chorus or something like that, but we won't go look at that. So let's just uh, continue our quick tour here. Let's load Havana Pad, see what that is. This is a Jupiter 8, number 32. And Paul Cotton likes us to take a look behind the screens and see what's going on in the Zencore with the analog synth models. And this shows that um, the Jupiter 8 is actually using a cross-mod structure here. And so we load that. A little bit of LFO here on filter envelope 1. We actually can see if we I mean, that's part of the live patch. If we change the cross mod depth, we can see what it does to the sound. So, continuing on, let's Jupiter 8, number 81, mid strings. Let's load and see what that looks like. So, once again, here we're just actually pretty much the same thing. Only a little bit of LFO going in the pitch envelope, maybe just for that little bit of uh, sound motion you get from the string. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of, of the, the new feature we have with the structure overview in sort of the home room um, to get around the display. Just showing here, you can go to EQ, return, the pan, overview, return. And, and so it gives you a, a good base to, to work on Zencore editing. I mentioned there was additional information available in the Phantom Manual that wasn't in the Jupyter XM Manual. The bulk of that information is actually in these physical structure of these different uh, mode, structure modes you can have. The remainder of that information I've captured on this notes page that just gives some note, additional notes about the structure layout and in particular when you have a modulator and a carrier set up which of the modulator settings are ignored in favor of the carrier settings. Uh, I want to shift base for just a second and talk about a couple of developer notes uh, for those that want to use the show hide functionality. A couple, Two things that uh, are necessary here. We'll jump into design mode here. And the first thing is, is, is you, everything, all the different displays that show up are piled up in the design mode here. So the first thing you want to do if you're working on them is, is lock everything but panels, have a blank page, and then unstack them before you start doing any editing work. And just have it, because you can, you can set all those pieces apart, and, and then it will keep your sanity for trying to edit, and now you unlock and work on it. The second thing here is, is we have five different show hide elements here. Actually, one, two, three, four, there's maybe six and, and one on the other page. And so what you need is, is it doesn't work to just have a simple set of buttons, but I have a set of, of managers here that are coded and know, for example, the, the partial two chain has to show up in three of the five different views. Um, the sync only shows up one, and the other parts only show up in one. So we set up a sort of a manager here. If we exit design mode, you'll see that that just sort of counts up and, and activates the proper different elements um, as that goes through the show in the different modes here. So that's a quick overview here of, of what we have in this new layout. And I want to give a couple shout outs. First of all, Dan and the gang at Confusion Studios that work so hard to keep MIDI Designer Pro updated and relevant. We always have the gang at Roland that have made this uh, awesome synthesizer. And got to say another shout out for Gattobas, who inspires us with his sound creation. Thanks.